I want to tell you about three arguably systemic racism or at least racism stories that didn't make the media hyperventilation cut and the trial of Derek Chauvin accused of murdering George Floyd. Now, as far as the media are concerned and Democrats, the death of George Floyd represents the fact that the police engage in systemic racism. Never mind, as I've said before in other videos, if anything, the research showed that the police are more hesitant, more reluctant to use deadly force on a black suspect than on a white suspect, something that even the left-wing uh, professor, Mark Lamont Hill, conceded in an interview with Candace Owens. Watch this. Now, when you get to, the, to death, when you get to police shootings, the, the, the most accurate and recent data from the studies that are out don't suggest a racial disparity, right? Black people aren't necessarily more likely to be killed by law enforcement every day, you know, every, on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, the numbers are relatively low. Now, as mentioned, there are three stories I want to tell you about that don't seem to advance the Democrat and the media's agenda. The first took place in Idaho. This was just in February, where a cop killed an innocent man. Police are investigating what happened last night in an officer-involved shooting. An Idaho Falls man was killed by a police officer who mistook him for a suspect they were looking for. Local News 8's Ariel Schroeder is following this story and has more on what happened. Ariel. Todd Bree, this is a grim day for law enforcement in Idaho Falls after a late night traffic stop resulted in the death of an innocent man. What? Shortly after midnight, Bonneville County Sheriff's deputies attempted to make a traffic stop on a car traveling on First Street in Idaho Falls. There were two people in the car. The man driving took off on foot and was described wearing a black shirt. Deputies and police in the area were called to search for the man who they later learned had an outstanding warrant for his arrest and had a history of violence with police. They thought he was carrying a gun. Thought the man he shot had a gun? The plot thickens. The passenger in the car was cooperative with law enforcement and shared messages on his phone to track the suspect using a GPS tracking system. This led them to the backyard of a home where they found a man wearing a black shirt and holding a gun. Officers gave instructions for the man to drop the gun. We do not currently have the answers as to what exactly occurred during these moments. We do know that during this, this interaction, an Idaho Falls police officer discharged a service weapon, firing one shot which struck the man. Wait, shot the man in his own backyard? Ultimately, officers and deputies determined that the man that had been shot was not the suspect male, but was actually, but was actually the resident of the address. Now, here is a picture of the suspect. And here's a picture of the innocent homeowner, father of four, shot in his own backyard. Note the suspect and the innocent man are both white. Where's Van Jones? Where's CNN? Where's Chris Cuomo? Story number two. This took place in December in Northern California, a place called Antioch where a police officer knelt on a Navy vet's neck for five minutes. Navy vet was later taken to the hospital where he died. Now the family believes that police were responsible for the man's death. They say he was experiencing a mental health crisis and they questioned the tactics used by officers to restrain him. Our investigative reporter Evan Sarnofsky has been following the story and spoke to the family. As I mentioned, they say that he was suffering a mental health crisis. Uh, Evan, was that made clear to the officers who responded? That's right. The family says that Angelo Quinto was indeed suffering some kind of a mental health break. The sister called 911. She went and help. Police arrived at the scene. They restrained Quinto. But the family says one of the officers put a knee on Quinto's neck. Neck? and he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead three days later. I was there, I was watching them, trusted them. Um, I thought, you know, they know what they're doing. Cassandra Quinto Collins recorded this cell phone video after her son fell limp while being restrained by Antioch police. It was two days before Christmas. She said her son, Angelo Quinto, was having a mental health crisis, so she put him in a bear hug. His sister Isabella called 911. 
When police arrived, she said he'd calm down. They take him from me and they put him down and he said, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. What happened next is at the heart of the family's legal claim they filed Thursday morning. And what happened here is the officers got on his, Mr. Coquino's neck with their knee and pressed down on it. Bay Area civil rights attorney John Burris is representing the family. They held a press conference in their front yard. Burris said they've conducted an independent autopsy indicating Quinto asphyxiated. Asphyxiation? And he literally was dead within five minutes. The Antioch Police Department didn't issue a press release or statement about the case when it happened. They also have not released the names of the officers or said if they were wearing body-worn cameras. The coroner's autopsy is still pending. In a statement to KTVU, Antioch Police Lieutenant John Fortner said the investigation is still open. Once some additional portions of the investigation are completed, APD will be getting together with all the involved agencies to provide more information to the public. Christmas presents for Quinto still sit unopened in the family's living room. <laughs> they hope their legal claim will help bring some answers. Now note the similarities between this case and George Floyd. In George Floyd, the cop nailed on his neck for almost nine minutes here. We're talking about five minutes according to the family. In both cases, there was audio. In both cases, there was video. In this case, this is a Navy vet. What's the difference? Why aren't the media hyperventilating over this case? It does not drive the narrative. The Navy vet was Filipino American. And as a result, again, it is rare for the police to kill anybody. Every year we're talking about maybe 50 million interactions between police and civilians, and that results in about 11 million arrests. Out of those 11 million arrests, 60,000 officers are assaulted. 60 killed last year. And we're talking about 1,000 people killed by the police. 500 of them are white, 250 of them are black. And every year there are more unarmed whites killed than unarmed blacks. Take a city like Baltimore, where the population is 65% black. There were 400 homicides last year, 90% of them black on black. St. Louis, population about 45% black, 300 homicides last year, 90% black on black. Why aren't the media more concerned about that? And in recent weekends in Chicago, you're talking about two people killed, 21 shot, weekend before that, six people killed, 22 people shot. Chicago is a city about a third black, a third white, a third Hispanic. Of the 500 homicides last year, 70% of them black on black. Now, racial story number three, this is about, well, this is about civilians really, about civilians who make false claims about police brutality against the police, which by the way, is a crime. This is what happened in the city of Rialto, California. Basically, this is the camera device. It's tethered with a battery pack. The battery pack allows us to activate the camera. There were 54 officers involved in the experiment. We had a 60% reduction in use of force instances from 61 to 25. Keep your hands up, see your hands, both of you. And we had an 88% reduction in officer complaints from 24 to three. Keep your hands up, I can see them. 60% reduction in use of force by officers, 88% reduction in complaints filed by civilians. Now, why would that be? Personnel complaints, assaults on officers um, are the two things that we in law enforcement would like to take to a minimum. It does all of the audio and video recording. It is stored inside here internally. It cannot be manipulated, turned off, changed in any way. And once that's done, for the end of the shift, you plug it in, it automatically links up, it will read the device, it will download the device, it will encrypt the information that came in so it's secured, then it goes back to green, meaning these are ready to, ready to be deployed. Again, why would that be? Is it because the cops, now knowing they're being recorded, are not engaging in the kind of brutality that they would engage in if they knew they were not being recorded? No, the cops behaved just as they are trained. The civilians behaved differently. When they get dispatched to a call or they're going to make a self-initiated contact, they turn the device on. How you doing, sir? What happened? Your wheel blew off? Yeah. Can I call you a tow truck or something? 
I'm able to exit the vehicle, make contact with this person. Can I call you a tow truck or something? I can pull this back and I can search through it. There's no manipulating what really occurred or what was really said. One day, this piece of evidence will serve as most of my report in court. Again, both cops and civilians know they're being recorded. Why the drop in officer use of force? Why the drop in civilians' complaints against officers? The, the transition was, was actually pretty smooth. Our officers are more upset, not that they wear it and they use it, but when they try to use it and it doesn't work. I think it keeps everybody honest. And by everybody, he means the civilians, not the cops. We took another year of data because we were really curious to see if, uh, because we had somebody tell us, hey, well, maybe the cops behaved during the experiment. They just, they, they were all on board, they were all excited, so they thought it was cool, so they didn't do anything. Um, so what we have here is something just to kind of show you the difference in an additional 12-month time period, keeping in mind we started the experiment, we used 54 officers. We increased by about 25 because more people were wearing them because we went live with the whole department in patrol. It's about a 47% increase in personnel. We had one more complaint in year two. So it looks like we're, we're, we're doing something right. Again, the cops behaved as they were trained. I have a good friend who works for the Rialto Police Department. He said, we acted as we always act. It's the civilians who changed their behavior once they knew they were being recorded. They stopped lying because filing a false complaint against the police is a crime. It was a little over $100,000 for the initial uh, 70 cameras that we had. Think of the man hours that you can save, the time that your investigators can save on investigating all of these cases. Quite frankly, money can be better spent by the officers being out on the street. The savings that we will have will easily outweigh the cost of the equipment. And if civilian complaints against officers fall almost 90%, think about the savings of time that is, and about how much more time cops can now spend on the streets fighting, you know, crime. I think you really have to ask yourself as a police chief, can you afford not to do something like this? The, this is the future of law enforcement. What does a 90% fall in complaints against officers allow officers to do? Uh, reductions and basically frivolous complaints. And what that all adds up to is basically putting cops back out on the street where they need to be. Rialto, by the way, is a city of about 100,000 here in California, and its population pretty much reflects the population of the state of California. Now, again, 90% drop in reductions of complaints against officers, and it's not because the officers were doing less proactive policing. In fact, they're doing more proactive policing, probably because they no longer have the fear of being accused falsely of engaging in police brutality. Now, um, I think I commented earlier about the officer proactivity and self-initiated activity. Um, if you look at this chart, we tracked every single contact that we made by every officer. And we basically had about 3,200 more proactive self-initiated contacts by officers during the experiment as we did during the, the year prior. So they didn't sit in the car. They actually got out there and did more, believe it or not. When, when? And Rialto is not the only place where this has been tried. It's also been tried in the UK, same result. A drop in the use of force by officers, a substantial drop in complaints against officers by civilians. 2016 Cambridge University study of five police stations in the UK found the same result. Complaints against the police fell 93% when some officers were randomly assigned body cams. One police department official said, anecdotally, in terms of bringing offenders to justice, on numerous occasions, the footage has tipped the ballot in favor of the prosecution, whereas without it, they may not have been able to prosecute. Also, again, anecdotally, we're getting more early guilty pleas from suspects who saves the victim the trauma of having to go to court and give evidence. So, in conclusion, don't get manipulated by the George Floyd trial. The media pretty much 
did not hyperventilate over the story that took place in Antioch, California, where the Navy vet had his neck knelt on by five minutes. The media did not go into overdrive over the Idaho man uh, who was in innocently killed in his backyard because it did not advance the narrative. Now, don't forget, we have been demonetized by YouTube, so in order to get me uncensored and on demand, go to LarryTube.com, that's LarryTube.com, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time.